This is a little mystery radio. There's no, the tag fell off, so who knows. But this is a, probably a made in Japan radio from the 1960s. So it's plugged in. I'm going to turn it on. Super cheap, like minimalist design. There's like almost nothing inside it. It's crackling a little, but... Hmm. These, these, um, radios with the circuit boards these are just known for being horrible. Those, the tubes get super hot. The tube sockets bake. The circuit boards bake. Starter connections break. Wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, it's just a loose tube. Yeah. Still not getting anything, but it's making noise. Come on. Of course, entertainment company. Okay. Okay, it works. But the volume's cranked. Volume is cranked. So, hmm. You have a crash in Vancouver on Knight Street, uh, sorry, in Richmond. Knight Street heading south, uh, south of the bridge here towards the 91 turn. One of those exit ramps. So there it is. Comes apart very, very easily. There's, there's five screws in the entire radio. The speaker isn't even held in with screws. It's held in with those little push washer things. I'm not going to bother taking that out. There's enough wire here for me to pull this out. The volume control is held in with two screws, and then there's one screw in the tuning capacitor. The chassis, the little circuit board slots into two rails. That's it. Um, like, look at this. There's nothing on here. There's a... Uh, oh, something looks... This... <laughs> yeah. A blown-out AC line capacitor. It looks like someone cut the lead off of it. That... That must have been fun when that thing went off. And then you got the rectifier audio output tube, the detector and preamp, and the IF, and the first tube, whatever that is. And then we got the filter capacitor, um, tuning capacitor, antenna, one paper capacitor. Or is that one of those ceramic ones? And then... A few disc capacitors, and this thing, this couplet thing, this has a bunch of resistors and capacitors in it. But I'm going to flip it over and look for uh, broken solders, because that's that's what I think it is. Because The problem is the tube sockets. All I do is move the tubes around and it starts working. 
working properly. The World Bank predicted in 2020 that demand for critical minerals will rise 500%. It's very loud now. It's just the tube sockets. They're horrible. Baked. Super baked. I might need to try and tighten the pins or tighten the sockets. I mean, that might fix it. But um, it doesn't need any capacitors because it only has like three of them. I looked it over and I found a few suspicious looking solders. So I reflowed. I reflowed all the solders on the rectifier and audio output tubes because they just looked baked. Um, I'm going to put it back together now and um, we'll see if it works. It's just the tube sockets are so, so baked, you know. There's nothing I can really do about that unless I put new tube sockets in. And I'm not going to do that, you know. That would be stupid. Uh, yeah. I was like, Bob, man can... It's working now, I got it. Just those broken solders and those horrible tube sockets. How to control, you know, two-year-old. And, um... The Kanak is the run. Joby Root. Some coaches have, you know, different responsibilities. Mark that has it burned off. Mark Staling here, Sydney. There who perhaps doesn't know a lot about... John Stoll says these votes can occasionally be seen as a political barometer of its move. It really depends on the timing in relation to the general election cycle. And in this case, it was just over a year ago that the region re-elected them. The 